Now let me give you some typical three-phase systems. Probably the lowest distribution voltage you're going to find is going to be 2400 three-phase three-wire. One of the next ones you'll see would be 4160 three-phase four-wire. Coming on down now, we'll have 4,800 three-phase, three-wire. Uh, let's go up uh, 7,200 three-phase, three-wire. 8,320 three-phase, four-wire. Oh, we'll go 12, 4, 70, 3 phase, 4 wire. 13, 200, 3 phase, 4 wire. 13, 800, 3 phase, 4 wire. Oh, let's see, 24, 9, 40. Three phase, four wire. Now, what I've got here are is a list of some system voltages. Now, if you remember that I mentioned three wire is delta, and four wire is y. And if you go down the line, look here, we've got three, four, three, three, four, four, four. Most of your distribution systems are going to be four wire, mainly because it's easier to balance the load. Plus, if I go to, remember we talked about power is equal to the voltage squared divided by the resistance. If I connect my sub, or my, uh, my tubs inside my substation, if I connect those things up Y for my higher voltage, I'll increase uh, my capacity on my system by three times over the delta connection. Now I need an extra wire. I'm going to have four wire. And see, they're all going to have to be reconnected. The tubs are going to have to be all reconnected and so on. But we'll get into the, we'll get into some of that stuff later. But take a look at this now, and you'll see that there's some there's some uh, standardizations of voltages here and you'll see that there are some multiples of those values say for example 2400 if I reconnect those you see uh, Y instead of Delta I would have a 4160 system and you see that if I had 4800 that uh, I reconnect that I would have 8320 my 7200, if I would reconnect that from delta, which we've got here, to a Y, you would see that we would have 12470. Then we have some values here that, uh, with taps on our transformers, and we'll talk about that, where we can, uh, where we can utilize a transformer, tra uh, transformer in, in probably several locations. We'll talk about those in a little bit. And you see we have 2400. Now, the phase to ground value on this one was also 2400. Uh, if I take this 48 down here and reconnect this, you see, then my phase to ground on this system would also be 4800. My phase to ground on 12470 system is 7200. Uh, my uh, phase to ground on 13200 is uh, 7620. My phase to ground on 13800 is 7970. My phase to ground value on 24940, by the way, is 14400. Now look at the standardization of voltages we got here. See how 2400, 2400. If I double 2400, I have 4800. If I triple 4800, I have 7200. 
and then of course 4,800, 7,200. If I if I double 7,200, I have 14,400. So there's a lot of of multiple of the 2,400 throughout uh, throughout the different circuits. And when we get into uh, dual rated transformers and so on, we'll bring this up again. We'll work more with with the different ratings. At this point, we aren't uh, into the ratings. We'll get into those. Now, as you see here, we're talking about delta systems and Y systems. And that those numbers are the phase-to-phase -phase values for your system voltages. And when we get into transformer ratings, it's going to be particularly important that you understand that those are our system voltages. Now let me explain to you where these number values come from. When I drew out the three phase systems, I drew them out as either a delta or a y. Now there's a definite three phase constant that we can use to determine what the phase to ground value or what the phase to phase value is going to be. We know that the system voltage is a phase to phase value. If I know, say for example, what the phase to ground or common is, I can calculate out what the phase to phase value is going to be by using this three phase constant. Now here I've got my Y configuration laid out. I know that if I have a coil voltage on each tub and they're connected Y, if I have a coil voltage of a certain value, that if I connect it up Y, I'll know what the phase to phase value is going to be. Now we could put it down on graph paper and we could plot it out let so many inches represent so many volts and so on and we could measure it with a ruler and determine what the voltage value should be or we can mathematically calculate it out. The, the three phase relationship is this if I know the phase to ground value I can multiply that by the square root of 3 and if I would take the square root of 3 I'd have 1.73 uh, to carry it out, I could carry it out and write out to the two, but I'd have 1.732 to be to me more specific. Now I want to show you where that value comes from. If I have a three phase system, then I know that the phases are all 120 degrees apart. If I would if I would go all the way around this thing, you would see that between each of my phases, I have 120 degrees. Now, you've worked it out in the vectors the first year, but you remember that we took two phases. Without this one on there, we took two phases. And through the parallelogram method, you'll remember, we found out that the combination of those two forces will also equal the value of one of them. In other words, if I would parallelogram this out, you would see I'd have a vector and it would be equal these other two. That means that if I have a vector down here also at 120 degrees, that that force would also oppose these two forces. In other words, if I would take the same force, all 120 degrees, it would hold that configuration. Now, to prove that if this is 1, the value between my phases is the square root of 3, we'll do it like this. If I would show the opposing force for this one and draw it on out like this, you would see that I would split this angle. In other words, I'd have 2 at 60 degrees now. And that if I have a vector value, if this value, we're going to call it 1. If we call that value 1, 
this is an opposing force, it has to also be that value. If I'm splitting this and I've got 60 degrees here, we know that all triangles, if I come down here like this now, we know that if this value is 1, we know this value as well as 1, and that we know that all triangles, the angles, can, the angles will add up to be 180 degrees. That means that this has to be 60 degrees as well. This has to be 60 degrees. So we have an equilateral triangle. That means this side out here has to also be 1. If I would draw this vector in right here, if this is 1, that has to be 1. If this is an equilateral triangle, this value here has to also be equal to 1. Okay? Now, we're looking for the relationship of this to between our phases. In other words, if this value is 1, what's this value right here? Okay? Now, if I have 120 degrees here, and all these angles add up to be to be 180, that means this has to be 30. And this would have to be 30. If you'll look down here, we have 60 and 30, that means this is a right triangle right here. In other words, I can use a right angle triangle method to uh, calculate out this value right here. Now, if I if I identify the side, now we worked with right triangles and so on, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll do more work throughout the entire uh, third and fourth year. Uh, if, if I call this hypotenuse of that right triangle Z, and this right triangle represents, or this hypotenuse represents that entire length, then you see that the, the hypotenuse has to represent a value of 2, you see. Okay, we'll call this side R that we're going to look for, we'll call this side X, and then we know that value is 1. See? Now, we're looking, remember now, we're looking for the relationship of this value to this. To find this, I made a right triangle out of it. I'm going to solve for R. Now, in our right triangles, what we did, we, we know that R then is equal to the square root of Z squared minus X squared. Okay? Now, Z represents 2 squared minus 1 squared for X over here. Okay, now, then we're going to square 2, we have 4 minus 1, which is equal to the square root of 3, or 1.73. So there's our three-phase relationship. We, we then can mathematically calculate, if I know the phase to ground value of my system, I can calculate the phase to phase value by multiplying the phase to ground by 1.73 to come up with this value. Now if I know the phase to phase value for my system voltage, I can then divide by 1.73 to find the phase to ground value. It all depends on, like your multiplication or division, it all depends on whether you're looking for a larger value or the smaller value. You want to get used to looking at a three-phase system graphically. In other words, if I draw that graphically uh, uh, and have it halfway close, you see, I could look at that and have a pretty good idea about what my phase-to-phase -phase or phase-to-ground value might be.